Archaeologists are working diligently diving into the land uncovered by the depleting of a huge supply in the Russian Republic of Tuva. They discover an intriguing object in southern Siberia, a woman's 2,000-year-old burial site. Yet what totally tosses the specialists is the item that they track down in her burial place. They decide to call the woman Natasha because they are intrigued by this discovery. At the point when specialists uncovered a 2,000-year-old grave, they found an iPhone form embellishment. But before we get started, the best way to keep up with the most recent and greatest History Apple Journeys content is to subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. The specialists found the woman's skeleton in a graveyard called Alabama Taze at the lower part of the Sand Sea. This is a monstrous man-made repository on the Yenisei Waterway, which takes care of the colossal Sand Sea Scalia Dam. This is the largest hydroelectric generating plant in Russia. Every May, the reservoir fills up for a few months, allowing archaeologists to investigate the sandy vegetation. This has prompted it being named the Russian Atlantis. The necropolis at the lower part of the Seine Ocean has demonstrated a bountiful wellspring of entrancing archaeological material, graves their date directly through from the Bronze Age up to the hour of Genghis Khan. In 2016, the grave's peculiar description was discovered. It's been affirmed as being as long as 2137 years of age, dated through Chinese coins joined to a belt worn by the lady which were first made in that year. The Tuva Republic, also known as Taiva, is a country that is a part of the Russian Federation and is at the center of Asia. Except in the south, where Mongolia's steppes and deserts extend, the territory is surrounded by mountains and forests in all directions. Different people groups have involved this land throughout the long term, positively back to the Bronze Age. Archaeological evidence from a variety of civilizations, including the Scythian, Early Turk, Mongolian, and Shingu, can be found throughout the land. Ancient settlements, fortifications, and graveyards are to be tracked down right across the rough scenes of Tuva. This area served as a breeding ground for these young new people around 2200 years ago, when the woman dubbed Natasha, whose grave we have already heard about, lived. It was a busy crossroads for migratory people and traders. They were migrants and came to hold influence over tremendous bits of Fopalasia, testing the force of encompassing people groups including the Han Chinese, under the administration of Modu Chanu. The Shangnu controlled the area of Tuva around 200 BC. Modu Chan, who was credited with establishing the Xiongnu realm. In 209 BC, he ascended to power by ruthlessly assassinating his father, the Tulman who had preceded him. Tuman, it would appear, had never been particularly motivated, so he took him hostage from the rival USC tribe, and then attacked them in the hope that this would provoke the USC to murder his son in retaliation. Tragically for his purposes, the ploy fizzled. In fact, Modi escaped from captivity, and his father felt compelled to reward him by giving him command of a 10,000-strong cavalry force. This was a decision that Modi would later regret. In preparation for getting rid of his father Modi, Modi ordered his warriors to shoot first his own horse, and then the pretender's favorite wife, with anyone who swayed being executed in a snap. Then he directed all his faithful devotees to shoot a Tuman. His father was killed by a hail of arrows, securing his succession. So legislative issues was a crude but effective exchange during the time of that Our Lady Natasha was covered in the Alabama Ted burial ground over quite a while back. In fact, we don't know if she was involved in court matters at the time, but the quality of the items she buried with is evidence that she was important and the cemetery where she lives is recognized as a significant site. The terrorism cemetery dates back more than 2,000 years to the Xiongnu era. This site is set on the sand encompassing the repository, and it appears to be that it has been corrupted by the disintegration brought about by the development of the water. The principal revelations there, human bones and stone graves were really jutting from the supply shores. However, the discovery that this cemetery, like the Alabama Taiwan, had not been looted in ancient times was a source of satisfaction for the researchers. The graveyard stretches for approximately one mile along the shore of the sea and sea. However, despite the extensive damage caused by erosion, a dig conducted in 2018 by the Russian Geographical Society did uncover some complete graves. During the brief annual intervals when an investigation is possible, approximately 30 burials have been excavated as a result of terrorism. One of those was of a lady whose body had become somewhat preserved. This was due to the extremely precise masonry of her coffin, which allowed the stone slab on top to fit so snugly that the body below had been preserved in part. At the Alabama Tay graveyard, archaeologists have uncovered approximately 90 graves with this example of nearly 120 entombments from the Shangyu period. 
specialists have noticed a few fascinating discoveries about the social designs of the time. The striking distinctions between male and female burials are one example of this. It would appear that the women were buried with significantly more opulent grave goods. The analyst revealed that the things viewed in male graves tended as of extensively less worth than the products tracked down in the female entombments. All kinds of people were many times joined by genuinely ordinary things like blades and fired pots, yet the ladies would in general be covered with things of considerably more obvious worth than were the men. Jewelry such as gold earrings, and elaborate belts with buckles made of bronze or jet Chinese mirrors, were among the artifacts that were found in many of the women's graves, but not in the men's. Different things that have been uncovered in female interments incorporated dazzlingly created diverse glass pendant and Chinese coins. One young lady had been covered with a little Chinese ringer produced using bronze. However, of this large number of adornments covered with the females, it is the weighty belt clasps that certainly stand out from scientists. Bronze fashion buckles are the most common, and they frequently feature intricate openwork patterns and motifs. Others are produced using cut bones, and there are some that comprise of a solitary piece of fly. The actual belts were embellished with or made of woven fabric or leather. Stone discs, Chinese coins, quarry shells, miniature bells, and geometric patterns were among these decorations. There were a number of different designs on the buckles, one of which featured two bowls or maybe yaks. One more donned two camels, and one class part portrayed a pony. The archaeologists found the belts simply in the situation on the skeletons that you'd anticipate around the midsection region. Covering ladies in these belts was obviously a piece of the memorial service customs of the time. Specialists estimated that the belts as well as going about as burial service clothing might have been worn at wedding functions. Proof for the possibility that these belts were worn in life, as well as in death, came looking like harm that a portion of the belts and clasps had supported. The other regularly found grave merchandise present just in female entombments included Chinese-style mirrors. Even though they are of Chinese design, the majority of these mirrors from the 2nd and 1st centuries BCE are actually copies made locally. Truth be told, male graves likewise incorporated a few fascinating things that were covered with their tenants. However, they were very unique nature from the products tracked down in female entombments. These strange ceramic jars might have been lamps, according to the researchers. Many of the archaeologists guessed these lights found on a superficial level by the graves as opposed to in them might have shaped piece of the burial service function. After the deceased had been lowered to the ground, it's possible that they were illuminated. The real graves showed a wide assortment and design with practically no unmistakable relationship between the kind of individual and tuned man lady, or kid rich or poor. There were stone coffins, wooden ones, and burials that were nothing more than holes in the ground for some people. The Alabama Te interments had one particular, however, unexplained trademark. There every one of the men were covered with their arms at the edge of their bodies, while the women's arms were organized across the bosom, midriff, or shoulders. As what seemed, what was obvious to the archaeologists were clear orientation differentiations proved by the varieties in grave merchandise. There is no question that female graves were significantly more extravagant than male ones. Conversely, in prior individuals who went before the Xiang, Nu and Tuva the Scythians had commonly covered men with additional luxurious grave products than ladies. However, it appears that the Xiang Nu had reversed this Scythian custom, with women receiving the more extravagant items in their graves. The specialists estimated that this youthful new change in entombment practice could show that ladies in that society had a more raised economic well-being than those in Scythian times. In any case, the scientists were wary about this hypothesis about showing the women's status. They noted that women typically wore more ornate clothing and accessories than men did in Eurasian societies at this time. However, what absolutely appeared to be the case was that a portion of the ladies in the two graveyards were richer than others. The distinctions in abundance were demonstrated by the uniqueness and the lavishness of the great merchandise. Furthermore, these differences might well have been reflected in various degrees of social situation inside the ordered progression of Shunga society. This is largely a theoretical assumption right now because we don't know enough about this 2,000-year-old society to draw complete inferences. In any case, the specialists have made a few speculative endeavors to distinguish exactly who these youthful new individuals, thus at the Alabama Tay and fear-based oppressors in burial grounds where they accepted they were most likely migrants who were subsidiary with the different people groups who made up this youthful new confederation. They might have arrived at the locale of Tuva from the most northerly pieces of China as the Shang Nu extended their properties. This putative movement would perfectly make sense of why the great products included such things as Chinese coins and the Chinese-style mirrors, 
regardless of whether privately made would likewise show impacts from past areas, the Shang Nu had possessed prior to getting comfortable Tuva. Using accelerator mass spectrometry technology, the material from the graves has been tested to confirm that the cemeteries date from the 2nd to 1st centuries BC. Also this time, exactly quite a while back finds a place with what we are familiar the historical backdrop of this youthful new individuals. This young newcomer, who might have been warriors or settlers at the time, would have traveled the well-traveled northward path that leads to Tuva. They displaced or absorbed the Scythians, who would have been there before. Leaving aside the history of ancient times, some of the graves have provided very human insights into the lives of these young new people, making it easier to relate to them. In 2016, archaeologists uncovered one grave in which the female tenant was luxuriously attired in silk robes, demonstrating that archaeologists have a feeling of the heartfelt they decided to dump her resting magnificence. At first, the scientists accepted that resting excellence could have been a priestess, yet further examination of her grave and its items really made it more probable that she was a Kalskin laborer. One more grave likewise contained a female utilized in distinctive artwork. The fact that this second woman was buried with a sewing kit and a spindle suggests that she was a weaver in the past. One of the belt buckles, approximately seven inches long and four inches wide, that many of these young new females had been buried with was undoubtedly the most startling find of all. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.